All right, hey friends of golfers, this is part two, learning about trying to get more spin. So we're gonna go in today at how to get that more spinner shot that you see on tour. Now, what is the key? As we've talked about, it's getting the right attack angle with the right dynamic loft, which is what we present here, which turns into our spin loft. When you add the attack angle to dynamic loft, we get a spin loft, and we're looking for a good number to equate to spin. So if I wanna get that spinner, all I do is I have a little more speed, I need a little more distance, and you'll see that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna look at this and say, attack angle is down five, six. I'm gonna add that to my dynamic loft of 48. So spin loft of 54, so I get a spin of about 7,000 on a carry of 37 yards. Pretty good, right? Now I'm gonna show you the difference here if we go like this. Okay, that's gonna travel, I think, close to the same yardage. Uh, so carry is 35, a couple yards difference. My spin was down to 4,000 because my tack angle was actually one degree up and I hit a point eight behind the ball. So think about that, how tough of a, of, a, of a, how it's gonna be impossible to get up and down frequently when you do that, because one's gonna have spin, one won't. That's why it's so important that we learn to dial in this attack number with dynamic loft. So we really know what we're doing. So get forward, get forward a little bit. And there you're gonna see an attack angle down to five, six again. Um, dynamic loft was 45.1, which kicked me up to 72.35 for spin on something that carried 38 yards, okay? <laughs> That's pretty darn good, okay? So now that you know what it is, if you, if, if you are coming in behind, and you do not have that angle of attack down, and you do not have a clean club and good balls, you won't do it. Now, TrackMan, like I'm looking at this here, is able to tell this, it takes this range ball, and I tell it to act like it's Pro V1. And that's why I'm able to, able to get real numbers off this. It, it just substitutes it. But what I'm doing is I'm going forward. I go a couple inches forward about it. I take club back like this, and I go literally forward. The shoulder goes down and, and to the left, and I get forward so I can make sure I'm hitting down into it and kind of going around, down and around. Now, some of you may say it's pretty darn low. Well, go watch a tour event and you'll see how low these things launch, okay? They're gonna launch around 30 degrees. So low is good. Now, let's say you had to get over something. Well, I'm gonna move it up in my stance, open that club face a little more and do a little more of a release of the hands like this to get it up. But that's, you know, you can work on that later and feel that first, get this stock shot down so you can start spinning them every time you hit it okay that's the key to getting that one hopper is learning how to and i didn't even present like crazy speed to it people think you have to hit like crazy down and do all this no like really tack angle five down 7200 spin from 36 that's pretty good if i had to deuce it up a little bit i would take a little shorter swing and then accelerate more um to put a little more acceleration on it but I would have to be a little further away probably to do that. And if I get 7,000, that ball's not running, okay? Folks, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you need to go back, watch the first one where I talk more about how to just make the solid contact, not so much about how to make sure we get this spinner like this. So watch that first. Look forward to more videos coming in the future on chipping and also on distance and power. I wanna kind of hit both ends of the thing. So we're gonna hit next of how do we really create a lot of power in our swing, so finesse, to power. We need them both. Thanks for watching. Eric Solberg, EJS Golf. Look forward to seeing you guys soon. Leave a comment down below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.